Uh, hello, everyone. Today, I have asked my dear friend Uli Homan, distinguished architect and corporate vice president in cloud and AI, to join me in discussing the cloud native capabilities that the Azure Cloud has for mainframe and mid ranges via Azure Logicals. Uli? Hi, Harold. How are you doing? Glad to be here. This is really an interesting conversation. So, I'd like to start with this uh, integration is everything. Let's say your organization has the best applications, data, and systems, but none of them speak or, or connect with each other. With no integration, uh, you will end up with just applications to work in silos without adding any business value. Integration is everything, right? Um, Uli, you said once we are building our own legacy, right? Yes, I've been known to share that thought uh, because whatever you do, whatever you built today is outdated pretty much the moment you release the capability. That's one of the reasons why we have agile and fast moving systems these days, because um, if you were building a system for a long time and then release it, you will not be able to go and really um, yeah, attract users. So from my perspective, everybody's building their own legacy. And that means also once you have invested in something, you want to be able to use it for a long time and drive more leverage out of the capabilities you built. And therefore you need to be able to integrate whatever you have built before uh, to move your company or your purpose forward. There are multiple challenges to, um, um, to consider when it comes to application integration and, and applications have multiple interfaces, mobile, web, desktop, or not interface at all, and APIs to connect and integrate to. Applications, they have multiple data sources and even different formats, right? So every application is now a collection of small services and, and, they, and they run everywhere and can be hosted in the cloud or on-premises. Mainframes and mid-ranges, for instance, are typically hosted on-premises, uh, though we will speak more about that. So Uli, tell me, what is the customer perspective about these well-known challenges? Well. The customers living with this since a long time, and I'm not sure they like it, but they, they deal with it uh, in the sense of looking for partners like Microsoft and others to effectively help them stitch all of their investments together into an outcome that makes end-to-end -end sense. Um, one of the key pieces uh, that you outlined here is there is a variety of these, so it's not a single challenge because some technologies, as you said, have interfaces, some of them have APIs, some of them have both um, and so forth. So while the modern world is exposing more and more clearly and cleanly uh, using APIs and events, uh, existing systems don't necessarily do that. And therefore uh, you need many capabilities to effectively bring them all together. So that's the challenge and it's all about economic benefit. It's effectively bringing together value that you have created yesterday with value that you're creating today. Awesome. Yeah, you are, you're yeah, you're spot on. Thank you, Uli. How can we help our customers to bring their technologies investments together to address the integration challenges in today's world? Um, so we have Azure Integration Services, our integration platform as a service product. Uh, what is it? AAS is a comprehensive, flexible integration solution for developers all kinds of developers, right? So it includes API management, service bus, event grid, and Azure Logic Apps. Uh, now, one may ask, why, why is it different? And how is it different than other iPaaS products? Um, first of all, we are a platform. Then we support both citizen and professional developers. We have a very flexible pricing. We have a strong security and compliance. We provide continuous innovation, and we have globally managed offerings, right? So. Uh, Uli, tell me, what is your take on integrating systems in Azure? Well, so the way you describe Azure integration services, I think, is uh, spot on in the sense I would add two capabilities or two characteristics to it uh, that you haven't mentioned. The first one is it's a composable system. What we are seeing with competitors often is that their iPaaS system is a box and there are lots of great capabilities in it, but you have to use the entire thing end to end. And integration, as we have seen in the previous slide, is not uniform. There's not one thing you need to do to integrate. So you need to maybe use one capability for this and another capability for that. So our system is more composed and composable. That means also it's more flexible on pricing, as you already mentioned, because you don't have to pay for the entire thing. You pay for the capabilities you like and you bring them together. The second thing is... Uh, BizTalk Server used to be the integration product that we uh, brought out to market. 
And BizDoc Server was more like this iPaaS, um, not black box, but integration into a single sort of product uh, that I described before. And for the cloud, we decided to uh, decompose and also focus on developers. Uh, because ultimately, developers do the integration. It's not a business analyst. It's not something uh, that is easily done. It's a developer that brings together the systems and uses capabilities. And therefore, we really pivoted our integration approach to be developer focused uh, rather than, let's say, integration manager focused, which is what BizDoc Server tried to do. And I think doing a good job, but we have learned that developers do most of this work, therefore, a focus on developers is the right um, approach that we took in Azure Integration Services. Why is it important to integrate mainframes and mid-ranges? So I think the question is, what is running on mainframes and mid-ranges and why are they still important today, right? So during the 20-year period when SNA was the primary networking method, many CICS and IMS uh, application programs were developed and put in place. Many of those programs still run today, powering financial services, big season credit card transactions, for instance, um, a checking and savings account operations in transportation. You have flight operation systems for airlines, flight scheduling uh, in the government. You have driver licenses, emission, taxes, returns, healthcare programs, defense and other industries. Uh, and some additional facts about mainframes, you their architecture, for instance, that uh, IBM IBM recently released Z16 that can process 300 billion inference requests per day with just one millisecond of latency. CTPF is known for uh, the extreme volume concurrency and fast response that provides, um, for instance, Visa credit card transaction processing during the peak holiday shopping season. IMS manages over 20 petabytes of production data and serves 300 million users per day. Considering that IMS was born in 1966 and is still used by 95% of Fortune, Fortune a thousand and it's older than CICS who started as a free terminal manager. Um, they can achieve, IBM mainframes can achieve nine fives, nine fives of availability. And according to a recent survey from BMC, the growth of mainframe environment is not really slowing down, but customers are trying to leverage the existing MIPS capacity. So, Uli, in what industries are you seeing more mainframes and mid ranges? Well, first of all, a fun fact, um, Kix or sorry, IMS is actually one year younger than I am. Um, so it's a really <laughs> interesting uh, way of thinking about it. But when I look at my uh, customer base, obviously the financial services industry is very strong uh, mm -hmm. with mainframe and mid-range technology, but more mainframe. Um, then you see some of it in government, mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot actually, then some of it in retail, although that has been... Uh, thinning out quite a lot because uh, the retail guys are looking at costs and flexibility um, very high, hard. Um, but I would say finance, uh, financial services, government, and to a degree healthcare, but mostly on the payment side. So mostly on the financial side of healthcare, you see a lot of mainframe capabilities still being used. Azure is the cloud with native mainframe and mid-range integration capabilities. So what products run on a mainframe? Um, are all of them IBM products? Uh, no, but the majority are IBM CICS, IMS, MQ, DB2, Informix, VSAM, SNA are all IBM brands, all from the IBM brand. Now, they have been evolving over the last 30 to 40 years, and so have we. In 1993, Microsoft released um, the product that provided integration with IBM whole systems. Yes, 30 years ago. This product evolved into host integration server, which has been providing core mainframe and mid-range integration capabilities for our strategic customers. Now, with the birth of the cloud, we have worked to incorporate the core host integration server features into Azure Logic Apps. Uh, Uli, how do you feel about this evolution? Well, as I said before, I think uh, bringing an end equation to uh, the table, meaning allowing a customer to invest in new technology, Microsoft Cloud, uh, cloud native capabilities and so forth, but bringing the existing investments along with uh, integration capabilities uh, that are rich and seamless is, I think, uh, the the ultimate ask of our customer base. And therefore, I'm super happy that we did uh, not only starting 30 years ago um, with SNA server and evolving into host integration server, but now uh, decomposing the host integration capabilities into native Azure 
uh, Logic App Connectors, I think, is a great investment. And I'm super proud uh, that you and your team are driving this evolution forward uh, for this important set of capabilities. Thank you so much, Uli. Now, what is uh, Logic Apps? Um, Logic Apps is a highly scalable and resilient automation of workflows and orchestration product for mission critical business processes. In other words, it's a, it's, it's a process orchestrator in, with workflows, right? So we have out of the box connectors uh, that allow richer integration patterns. We connect or integrate data from, to, from the cloud or to on premises. Uh, we provide B2B and enterprise messaging in the cloud. And we have a power, powerful web-based workflow designer. So something, something important to mention here is that uh, if we were to place here um, logic apps between between control and productivity, it would be sitting right in the middle, right? Um, because of the feature that uh, features that it provides. Now, here we have a list of uh, the uh, Azure Logic Apps technologies for mainframe and mid ranges integration. The first five are available for customer to use. The IMS ones are still being incorporated from the HIS product, but will be released soon. Um, I think I think we are getting to the to the to the core to the core of the central message of this uh, of this discussion only. So let me start with uh, uh, telling you that it all starts in the cloud, right? With 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 a workflow. This workflow brings the ability to leverage a universe of technologies and protocols for data exchange. Um, this is a logic apps workflow. When we, when the need is to integrate with mainframe and mid-range systems, our mainframe and mid-range connectors come to play. They can be extended with host integration server capabilities when SNA integration is needed as well, right? Because of the transactional and, and, and SNA format support that it provides. But more importantly, as with our current host integration customers today, we meet them where they are. We power on-premises integration already of terminals, printers, ATMs, applications, host files into modern applications for mainframes and mid-ranges. And we also meet them where they are headed. We have many partners who provide different types of modernization, partial, complete, and we integrate with them today. In other words, you should think of us as the universal connector for mainframe and mid-ranges via Azure Logic Apps. So, Uli, what are your, your thoughts on this approach and how do you see the mainframes and mid-ranges market evolving over the next five years? Well, first of all, the approach, as we have said before, is the right one. Creating this end equation, really saying, hey, look, there's new investments you want to make, but there's existing investments you have made. How do you bring this all together um, is a fantastic approach and something uh, that I look for every time uh, I engage with you. And doing this in a workflow model is very um, yeah, normal. But again, also noting that you don't have to use the workflows. These connectors can also be used uh, using an API uh, if you are a coder that doesn't like the workflow model. So that's something that I think is important. And then giving customers the choice of saying, we want to preserve your investments. And IBM, I work with IBM quite a lot. Uh, they are doing a good job of keeping the mainframe modern and relevant. They're doing some work with us on DevOps and other capabilities. So from my perspective, this is never going to be an X or choice. It's either the mainframe or something modern. It's always going to be an and choice. And there are some customers that are choosing to modernize their uh, mainframe capabilities by migrating code um, using the partners that you have listed here, Raincode or Microfocus, SkyTap and so forth. Um, over into a cloud native world because they uh, look at the capabilities that they're wanting moving forward and saying that the existing capabilities don't necessarily meet their needs anymore. But at the same time, I'm seeing customers saying, nope, the mainframe works really well. It does what it does really well. And I'm not going to expand the function of the mainframe, but I'm going to keep it and integrate the capabilities uh, using, for example, the Microsoft uh, Logic App capabilities uh, to effectively expose the value native into my new applications. And I've seen customers do both, where they offload systems off the mainframe, but keep other systems on the mainframe. Again, it's never going to be an X or conversation. I like and conversations. And then based upon return on investment, based upon strategy decisions, you decide what are you going to do, what makes sense. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Azure Logic Apps for mainframe migrations. Um, 
Why do we say that supporting what that we support the entire modernization journey? Um, there are multiple approaches for modernization, lift and shift, refactoring, rewrite, and, and um, um, coexist, right? Other patterns are available as well, right, for customers who want to um, not, not necessarily um, torch the workloads, right, make changes on it, but also they want to replatform, lift and shift with changes, or mainframe as a service, or mid ranges as a service, right? But what are customers saying? So we recently ran a survey to understand potential blockers of adoption of cloud technologies. Um, and what did the customer say? Um, help me with my on-premises dependencies. And, and that is exactly what we do and where we are investing in helping those customers who remain on-premises and those who are moving to our cloud with cloud native capabilities to integrate with many firms that have been brought to the cloud rewritten, code converted, partially modernized, and so on. Um, so Azure Logic Apps includes legacy um, integration capabilities in the cloud consumption model that our customer choose. Um, Uli, how is becoming relevant coexistence and augmentation of capabilities for mainframes and mid-ranges customers? Again, we talked about this in the previous uh, slide, where effectively, <clears throat> Customers make, have to make decisions about investments. And sometimes it's the right decision to move forward with replatform, rewriting, rearchitecting. Sometimes it's the right thing to keep the system where it is and integrate it. And sometimes you say, the system is so large, I will take parts of it and modernize and parts of it I keep. Um, and maybe my strategy is over time to modernize all of them. Um, I've seen customers do all of these. Um, and therefore having a flexible strategy that allows you to do all of these patterns and models at the same time um, is the right strategy from an investment perspective for us as a company, providing that platform and then giving the customer choice of what is the right thing for them, uh, given their scenario, their investment model, uh, their capabilities and their business process uh, opportunities that they are seeing uh, to use modern technologies to reach more customers uh, drive cheaper outcomes, better outcomes, and so forth. This is the end of the presentation of this discussion, and 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 I wanted to quickly cover the uh, the key takeaways for this discussion. Um, our core mainframe and mid ranges integration technologies have been available for thirty years, supporting our mission critical customers on premises and in the cloud. Uh, sure, Logic Apps is at the core of our iPaaS, enabling mainframe and mid ranges integrations and migrations. Um, Azure Logic Apps Connectors provide direct TCP IP communications to mainframes and mid-ranges. Uh, host integration server extends Azure Logic Apps to support the SNA architecture. Um, please reach, reach out if you have further questions or need assistance with our technologies at hcampus at microsoft.com or at Twitter, YouTube, or LinkedIn at hcampusu. Um, and Uli, any closing thoughts, please? Again, um... I'm super impressed with the evolution of the technology that you have been guiding uh, for quite some time. And I'm also happy that we continue to invest in our customer base because, again, uh, the ant equation that we have talked about so much is critical and respecting invest, uh, investment choices, either from the past or even from the present, is going to be important moving forward, but also enabling partners to help customers with migration modernization if they desire. Um, is again a key capability and the host integration capability um, and mainframe integration capabilities that you we talked about here are key because not, Rome has not been built in one day and migrating and modernizing a mainframe does not happen in one day. And so having a path where you can move forward but keep connections to the existing capability until you're ready with a new system, whatever that looks like, mm -hmm. um, is critical, even if you decide to modernize. Uli, thank you so much, as always. And it's been a great pleasure speaking with you. Oh, we can talk. My pleasure. Thank you, Harold. Appreciate it.